So you're sitting on your couch watching TV, thumbing through Instagram, you're looking around, maybe even find some wheels that you love and you need to have them for your car. But have you considered everything you need to know? Yes. Will that design make it onto my car? Yes. What are the limitations and how does that actual spoke shape change whether it fits my car or not? We're gonna talk about that and talk about the difference that spoke profile can actually have on your vehicle right now. What's going on? I'm Scott from Koenig. You just watched an intro, now click the subscribe button. Welcome back, friends. It's always good to see you here. We enjoy having you. Thanks for coming by. Let's talk about spoke profile and what does it have to do with your wheel choice? See, it's one of those things that's kind of often glazed over. You see, you look at a wheel, you know it's concave, you know it has a deep lip, but how does that affect the brakes that are on your car? We're gonna get into that and we're gonna run through each kind of type of spoke profile and kind of give you an idea of if that's meant for you. So jumping into number one, let's talk about concavity. It's clearly popular with a lot of kids nowadays, right? If you're uh, you know, a happening young man, you probably want to have some concave wheels, right? But how does that concavity affect the fitment of your car? Well, look, if you have the average run-of-the-mill car, maybe it doesn't have any effect. Maybe it's perfectly fine. You can throw one of those concavy boys on there. But what if you have a car like an STI, an Evo, something that has a sizable brake. That's when you really need to start thinking about how that's going to affect brake fitment. So concavity is essentially the distance that a spoke is going to move from the outside of the wheel toward the PCD. That sweeping movement is what we call concave. Now, this isn't super specific to the wheel industry, right? Concave is a term that works and you can look it up in any dictionary anywhere. But how does it fit your brake? We talked about that sweeping movement. Well, some brakes are going to run an interference path right in the middle of that spoke. See, let's pretend my hand here is the caliper. The flatter the spoke you have, the more clearance you have. As soon as that spoke starts to make movement, now we risk the fact that we can impede on the caliper's space. Now, a really concave wheel, most likely it's going to clip, especially right at the bottom of the caliper. And when that happens, that's when you're gonna have a lot of fitment problems. So just because you have the right size, you have an 18, nine and a half, just because you have the right offset, you have a 35 offset, all these things, let's say, work for your car, doesn't mean that that's gonna clear your brake kit. Now, if you have a big brake on your car, if your car came with an optional big brake kit, or if you're planning to get a big brake kit, Keep this in mind because this will be the double-edged sword that ends up keeping you from enjoying the wheels that you purchased or the wheels you want. So spoke profile number two, we kind of just briefly mentioned it, and that is a flat spoke profile. Now, flat is going to be one that maybe isn't aesthetically as pleasing as you want, but the one thing it will give you is the most amount of caliper clearance that's available in that specific wheel design. So what most companies are gonna to try to do is they're gonna to try to make the wheel as concave as possible while still being able to clear those big brakes. We talked about concavity, we talked about flat profiles. Let's talk about spoke shape. Now look, this is kind of the design of the wheel. This is kind of how the wheel is drawn, right? So when you look at the wheel from the side, you may see that a wheel has a lip. You may see that it has a spoke shape that's rounded. You have to understand that these spoke profiles are going to vary how much clearance that your calipers are gonna have and where they're going to have that clearance, right? Spoke clips this way, maybe it has problem hit clear in the brake. Uh, spoke is a little bit taller, maybe it clears. You talk about concave and flat, but there's a lot of different in between, and that's where those spoke shapes come in. So let's get into a real world example. Ampliform, countergram. These are two different wheels that have completely different designs. A countergram is going to have more of a convex shape, at least on the A profile. Now we can get into A and B. In fact, you can go watch a whole video about it, but right now let's just talk about the A profile with the convex spoke. That spoke profile is going to be a more rounded spoke profile. It's going to have caliper clearance. It's really good in the middle of the spoke, but it's going to have a slightly lower drop center. When you start to look comparing the Koenig Ampliform, you'll see that there's really, that drop center is much higher. You have a little bit more height clearance. Additionally, you have more clearance throughout most of the spoke range until you get down to the PCD. So moving on to another point, this is lip size. Now you might say lip size has nothing to do with spoke profile. Well, on the contrary. So here's the deal. Lip size is directly related to what that spoke shape can be. Because at the end of the day, 
that spoke has to return to meet the lip. Why didn't you just go home? So the bigger the lip, the more that spoke is either going to be convex and have to return to the barrel. A good example would be like a Koenig Lightning, uh, or it's going to have to be more concave. When we see wheels that are gonna be more concave, this is going to be difficult, especially with a lip. You just can't develop enough caliper clearance to really make it work. So moving on to our final point, this is PCD depth. And again, you're gonna go back to, well, PCD depth is not spoke profile, but it is because PCD is where all spokes are going to land. The wheel has to connect itself to the part that holds it to the car, right? When you look at a depth of a PCD, it's going to change based off of the spoke profile. For example, on a flatter spoke profile, you're gonna have a lot more distance that you have to make it in to where the lug holes would mount. And that's gonna give you a really deep PCD. You'll also see this a lot on wheels that are lower offset. But now when you look at wheels that are concave or wheels that are wider or lower offset, you generally will notice that it is a more narrow PCD depth. I mean, when we look at a countergram in the B profile, it's gonna have a really uh, narrow PCD depth. All right, now hold on. So you see what I did here was I used my finger to measure. So the first one had three notches. The second one had two. Let's watch that again. So the first one had three notches. The second one had two. Sometimes these things, when you're looking at wheels on other cars, they really could change the appearance of the wheel you think you're going to buy and then find out that it won't work on your car or it looks different when it comes in the box. So these are all things that affect the given spoke profile that affect how the wheel is gonna look at the end result. Um, and it's a good thing to keep in mind. So if you're looking at a car that maybe is running a 18 by 11 and you can only fit an 18, eight and a half, don't expect the same wheel to show up in the box. So here's one disclaimer I wanna give you that wheels and concavity and lip size and PCD depth, it's all driven by what's possible. And sometimes it's just not possible to make those types of movements in the spoke profile, lip sizes, in narrow wheels. They'll just never clear brakes. So that's it. We did a little wheel tech thing. We gave you some information, but you should know that these things are really things that we run into every single day when people send us loads of questions about wheels and tires. So we hope that you find this information informative. Uh, we have plenty of more informative stuff on the channel. So subscribe, like, and go check it out. We'll catch you on the next one.